There are some lessons that life just keeps hammering over and over and over and until you've actually understood them. And among the most important lessons that you can learn in self-development is that growth happens at the edge of your comfort zone. What this means is that any self-improvement, any actual development will happen when you're slightly uncomfortable. Not when you're completely overwhelmed and don't know what the fuck you're doing, but when you're within your realm of capacity, but there are some new elements that you're unaware of, that you don't quite know how to deal with. So you have to develop new strategies, new ways of coping with the problems in order to overcome them. And thus, you grow. It's kind of like when you go to the gym you actually tear down the muscle and it has to adapt, it has to grow to be able to cope with the new loads, the new stress that putting your body under. Another case, I say this because recently I took on an interesting role. I can't go into detail as to what that role is because I signed an NDA, so if I happen to blab a little bit too much about the specifics, I'll have a team of lawyers up my ass. FBI, open up! So I'd rather not. For practical purposes, let's just say it was a plumbing company in the North Pole that wanted to merge with Reindeer Corp. Santa was a little bit eager to get the deal done, so he needed to hire an outsider. That's what happened. And that's my story, and I'm sticking to that. So anyway, this plumbing company in the North Pole put up an advertisement. And it looked fairly interesting, to tell you the truth. It said something along the lines of, copywriter slash ghostwriter needed to deliver a prospectus in three days. And it paid a pretty penny. And there wasn't a single other applicant. So instantly, I jumped on it. I'll admit that I wasn't completely sure on the specifics, because the thing is, whilst I'm an economist, whilst I've worked as a financial journalist, and I had a role at an investment bank where I helped build up their analysis division in Europe, I wasn't 100% sure that I could do this job. But it was within the realm of possibility. That said, that night when I offhandedly told my father about this, his alarm bell started ringing. The thing is, he'd worked in investor relations for most of his life, so he was very aware of all the different roles that that sort of job prospect has. And prospectus writing, according to him, is a role that is usually reserved to lawyers. Only if you know how to speak the magic words can you do it? And obviously that gave me some pause. I, I'm not a lawyer, I'm an economist. But either way, I had already sent out the application, so what else was there to do? So I waited, and then Santa did actually contact me. He said, well, this plumbing company needs your help. And I said, sure, Santa, what do you need? Well, he started explaining that the lawyer, the technical speak, was already there. All those different elements, the legal language, had already been incorporated into the prospectus. At this point, what it needed was simply business lingo. How to pizzazz it, how to make it exciting. Welcome, take a seat. Thank you for coming in. Now let me give you a brief rundown of the position on offer. In a nutshell, the primary purpose of the role is to execute the Institute's external and internal communication plans. Now this involves the implementation and maintenance of a broad range of communication methodologies in order to engage staff with the Institute's vision and strategic plan and connect with clients at various touch points. So You'd be working collaboratively across marketing and communications and people and culture functions to synergize a robust and dynamic system of communications across multiple channels to add value and assist in achieving business objectives moving forward. Basically just marketing bullshit. And I jumped at the opportunity. Who doesn't want to write marketing bullshit for a pretty penny? 
Anyway, he sent me this half-finished prospectus with highlighted things of need that I needed to do, so I got to work the next day. And I started working on this thing, and obviously there was a lot of information that I didn't have. I didn't know the company's growth prospects, I didn't know their rivals, I didn't know the market, etc, etc, etc. So I left those things intentionally blank, because I assumed that wasn't the role that I needed to fill. So I sent it off with already my take on things. So I filled out with all the information that he had given me, and I thought that was that. And as soon as he reads it, he calls me. And Santa's very displeased. He's like, I think I'm missing something. Is this it? I'm like, yeah, should there be something else? And then he explained to me, well, I actually want you to, to fill out these sections. I'm like, okay. And it is here that I've activated my bullshit ability. When I'm allowed to bullshit, when I'm allowed to just go at it, I'm very good. So I basically gave him a spiel of the things that I think the prospectus needed. And he agreed. He thought that was very wise. And he started telling me to basically lift off of other quarterly reports, annual reports, you name it. Just basically take from them, but in such a way that won't get their asses sued. Uh, no copy-pasting, just paraphrasing. Fine. Anyway, over the next few days, this was a caffeine-induced binge where I produced so much business fluff that it would make most marketers blush. 20 pages worth in a day. A new record, if I do say so myself. So I sent it off and cashed in my check. Every single word that I'd written, absolute bullshit. But it sounded nice. And that was, was the, what was important. That was what I'd been paid for. That's essentially the role of any investor relation department, any public relation department, any good marketer. That's their role. They take a shit sandwich and make it seem like, mwah, like it's the absolute best dish in the world. And I did that to perfection. But here's the thing. I was very skeptical, quite frank, but it was within the realm of possibility. So I had to grow to adapt to the circumstances. In aiming for the stars, I managed to land on the moon. And that's the thing, that's the lesson that I want to convey to you. Now, this situation could have easily just exploded in my face. I could have easily ended up with my neck deep in water and just paddling to survive. But I didn't, I managed to overcome it quite well. And now I have that feather that I can add to my cap. And it's one that very few people actually have at their disposal. Now I can say I ghost wrote a prospectus for a plumbing company in the North Pole. Very few people can claim that. And I'm sure that over time, that experience will allow me to leverage myself into even greater situations, even greater amounts of bullshit. Like, this is just the beginning. This whole nonfiction ghostwriting thing. I think I just need to enter into enough circumstances such as these where I don't quite know whether I'll succeed, but I'll succeed anyways through sheer will and determination, through sheer ability. I'll be able to overcome the difficulties. And eventually, I'll look back and say, wow. You know, the, the, the phrase, fake it till you make it, is often quoted. And it is a useful phrase to always remember, because I think the vast majority of people who make it to the heights actually know what the fuck they're doing. They're just adapting as the circumstances present themselves. And oftentimes, they're just hanging on there for dear life, but overall, they manage to do it. But you know, this, the terrifying thing, the absolutely terrifying thing, is when you realize that a sizable percentage of the world runs in that. Fake it till you make it. Basically, everyone in charge is faking it. That is fucking terrifying, but also exciting. That means that nobody is born to be in this position that they're at. They're just faking it. Adapting to the circumstances as best they can and trying to present this prim and proper veneer. I'll tell you the truth, whilst writing it I was like, what the hell am I producing? But I ended up producing great work. That's the thing. 
next time that you need to do something for your business, next time that you need to do something to improve in your love life and your gym life and in your health, whatever. Take that into consideration. Adapt to slightly bigger challenge. Take on risks where you know it's a calculated one. You know that it's in, within the realm of possibility. Don't completely jump into the deep end because then you'll drown. But if you take on small challenges, but slightly out of your reach, then you'll grow to adapt to them. But hey, that's just an idea. See you next week.